I'm Jerry Fernandez, president of the Multicultural Food Service and Hospitality Alliance. Recently, we had an opportunity to go out to uh, California and spend some quality time with Magic Johnson, and here's a snippet about what he had to say. Well, Magic, first let me thank you for taking the time to be with us this morning. Thank and, you. Uh, you made the successful transition from the locker room to the boardroom. Tell, tell me a little bit about that adventure. <laughs> well, first of all, I knew mm -hmm. how to run an offense. I knew how to win uh, when I was had on those little tight little shorts when I was with the Lakers. <laughs> <laughs> I knew how to go into Kareem and let him shoot the sky hook. Yeah. But I think that what happens when, when you're in business, you have to admit to yourself, I don't know business. Right. So let me call some people and say, look, I don't know business. Can you help me? So I sat down with a lot of uh, men who were successful. Michael Ovitz is probably the one who really helped me. He told me one great thing. He said, look, if you're the best in basketball, you got to hook up with the best in business and hire the best people. Business has always been part of your dream. You know, I read in one of your books about you being a, a young man, you said that you were actually cleaning the offices and you put your feet up on the chair. That, is, that, is that a true story? Yeah, that's a true story. About 15 years old, that was my first job, and I used to clean this uh, office building. And uh, every time I'd get to the seventh floor, it was my favorite office. So I would bust in the door like I was the CEO, right? <laughs> and I would pretend, and I would go sit down, recline this chair all the way back, put my feet up <laughs> on the desk. But you have to go through those times to get to these times. Because my first dream was, of course, was basketball. Right, right. But then I always wanted to be a businessman second. You chose the food industry and entertainment industry. Tell me about why. The food industry is, uh, is a people business. And I'm a people person. And then when you look at the opportunities that it could create in the urban market, right. we don't have choices like in suburban America. We can't say, I want to go eat here, here, here. Normally, it's only one or two options right. for us. And so I took Starbucks to urban America, TGI Fridays to urban America, Burger King now, urban America. So you take these great brands right. and you bring them into urban America, which has a $600 billion spending power for African Americans. Right. Latinos has probably 650 to 700 right. million. You're uh, right. um, uh, so it's really growing and growing and growing. So with that type of uh, money coming in, man, you're looking at growth for any company. As long as you have minorities working in the store or the restaurant, uh, making sure minorities are involved as the suppliers and the vendors, now minorities feel they have a, a, a ownership in this restaurant or in that store. And then they will support it even more so. And they will protect it and take care of it. What is it about Burger King that, that caused you to say, that's the company I want to partner with for my next growth opportunity? Well, we have to remember that Burger King was probably one of the first companies, companies to enter into urban America. They also have uh, been able to meet with the pastors of our community. So those type of things have been important to me. I've watched Burger King for a long time. I've been a customer for a long time. I'm looking forward to my 30 stores within the urban markets and being a part of Burger King for a long, long time. And also, too, there's a lot of minority franchisees, uh, owners, as far as in Burger King uh, system, too. Tell me a little bit about how important it is making those connections with, the, with the, the organizations and the people who make up the urban market before you try to uh, take advantage of the business opportunity. Well, I think, first of all, you got to reach out to the community and to, uh, to the leaders of those communities. Because what people have to realize, the urban market is a different beast and a different yep. animal. So if you can get with a group like yours who can walk them through, hey, these are some of the pitfalls that you have to look out for. Then they will have a better chance to be successful, not just for one, two, three, four, but for 10, 15, 20 years. What words of wisdom would you give to other business leaders, other executives, CEOs who come from the food and hospitality industry about the urban market? If you really want to grow your company, uh, that's any company, you now have to look to the urban market. There's no question about it. Um, if you look because there's so much opportunity and disposable income within that community. They will support your business only if you bring us the same quality that you bring to suburban America. 
And that's what you have to do. You know, it's just like shooting a jump shot. Whack. Oh, let me not bring that up because my Lakers lost oh, to the Pistons. I wasn't going to bring that up. Oh, man. <laughs> I didn't get it done. But anyway. <laughs>